Hi, thank you very much for coming. Uh, my name is Deepak. Um, <laughs> And I'm a PhD candidate in physics here at University of Toronto. And I'm going to be talking about creating uh, Python GUI tools as well using PyQt and Matplotlib. So it's going to be very similar to Mohammed's presentation. Uh, so my, my requirements are slightly different. I'll tell you in what context I'm trying to implement this thing. So my uh, contribution for this project came from the University of Toronto and the National Centers for Atmospheric Research, which is in Boulder, Colorado, whose climate model we uh, use a lot. So what we want to do is we want to do paleo modeling which is basically uh, using the climate models that we use for everyday climate modeling and apply it to a time period way past in the past. And, the, and specifically, what we do, uh, use here uh, is the CSM model from NCAR, which is one of the top models in, in the world right now. And the reason why we want to do paleo modeling is because um, the current climate models are very uh, highly tuned. They're like people go with hand and just tune things and make the parameters right to today's life. And, so we don't really know how sensitive the models are, really. So the one way to check how, well, how valid those parameterizations are is to go back to a time period and to which it is not tuned, simulate that time period, and see what, how good the parameterizations are. Also, some of the time periods are very interesting because they are very similar to what we might get in the future. So we can understand that and inform ourselves for, uh, for the future. The problem is that when the climate models were written, they were written for present day. So if you want to change anything, you have to go and change a lot of things by hand. Specifically, you have a different topography, a different distribution of land and water, uh, and different vegetation. So you have this grid, grid of data that, is, that has varied quite a bit depending on what time period you're in. And to change that thing is a very, very manual, manually intensive process. So for example, this is the time period about uh, 3 million years ago. This is something that I work on. As you will see, the uh, purple bar shows where there is ice. And there is no ice in Greenland over that time. There is no ice as well over the West Antarctic, which is at the southern tip of uh, South America. Um, and you will see there's notable difference over uh, northern Canada as well. So there are, these differences will have to be manually changed uh, grid by grid and then re-implemented into the model. Another example is the last glacial maximum about 26,000 years ago when Canada was covered mostly by three kilometers thick ice. And you can see that there the entire world's oceans were 120 meters uh, um, shallower. Okay? And you can see there's a lot more shelf that is exposed over near Florida, uh, near the, uh, the land, the connection between Alaska and Russia, et cetera. And uh, so here again, once you have to change a lot of things by hand, and if you want to do a transient simulation all the way from 26,000 years back to the present day, as the topography continues to change as a function of time, you have to go back and change the boundary conditions again and again multiple number of times so that you can advance the simulation. So this is a kind of manual process. So I wanted to do it as a GUI. And I had no idea where to start with the GUI. So I thought that, OK, I will try to learn something. This is one of the primary motivations here. And this will also help address this problem that I had. Uh, it turned out that the results turned out to be much better than I had expected. Uh, so I think that a lot of people will be able to use this thing as a starting point, as an example for how to create complex GUIs for scientific programs. And other research groups might be able to adapt this code uh, to their own kind of purposes as well. Um, so the GUI tools are composed of four different kinds of Python uh, programs. One is called the topography editor for editing the topography and the land sea mask. The other one is for editing the grid for the ocean model. And then we have to edit something else for the ocean model, which is called the arm mask editor. And then one interesting thing is that uh, when water falls from climate models onto land, that water has to be redirected onto the ocean so that the salinity is conserved. And there are these direction vectors that tell where the river should go. And you have to manually fix those direction vectors for different topography. Otherwise, if you have any kind of loop, then the water just keeps circulating on land. It never reaches the ocean, and the ocean salinity keeps changing. So this is built on PyQt and Matplotlib. This is the code count here. As you can see, it's not only a few hundred lines of code, each of these. And hopefully, you will, will see that we can do a lot with it. Um, and I would like to point out very high code to comment ratio here. OK, I'm very proud of this. Um, <laughs> The general idea about all of these tasks is that there's a, a Qt application that is started in the main loop, and then the application loop is started. The main uh, editor is implemented as a, as, a, as a derived object from QMain window, which is a Qt uh, widget. And then there's a data container. So editor class contains all the button press events and key press events and how to manage and rendering the window. But the data container class contains all the data. And I'm not going to talk about a data container class here. So let me show you how it looks like. So this is one of the topography editors. So the preview is on the left-hand side. OK, you show the entire world map. And the region that we are looking into is shown as a view. OK, it helps us focus on smaller regions because the, grids, the overall grids can be very large. So instead of squishing everything in one grid, and we can move this thing around. Um, so information is displayed uh, where our cursor is. The cursor is in the black square at the top. There's status bar on data entry. 
Uh, this is the KMT editor for ent editing the uh, ocean model tools. As you can see, the world map looks kind of weird here because in the ocean model, the North Pole is rotated to be on top of Greenland, so Greenland is kind of blew up there. And here we have taken away the ice from East Antarctica, and there is a new kind of land distribution there, and uh, we have been able to edit it. There's a region mask editor that allows a lasso tool, which is exposed by Matplotlib. Okay, so I can select a certain region. I can enter a, a value that I want to code for the region and that value is encoded, so I can arbitrarily select different regions to specify which region I want to call something uh, as. And this is for editing the, re uh, the river transport vectors. Okay, it looks like this. And one nice thing here is the math plot lib apparently allows you to use Unicode markers, so you can use any kind of markers for your scatter plot. So here I have used the different arrows for uh, the different kind of markers. So let's quickly see some uh, examples. Um, so this is the uh, GUI uh, for the uh, thing. We can uh, move this thing around. Uh, so you can see if I press different kind of uh, buttons. Uh, okay, apparently it's not showing which buttons I'm pressing. So I can move my cursor around with my arrow keys, and you can see the information that is displayed is changing continuously. I can move my view around as well by using H, J, K, L keys, just like uh, VI. If I want to go to a completely different region of the world, I can just simply take my mouse on the preview pane. I can click here. A button press event is, computed, is initiated, and that calculates the coordinates of where my box is, and then a view is rendered here. So another good thing is that it can track changes. So for example, if I change the minimum level for all the values to be, say, four, it computes where it's changed, and all the changed cells are highlighted. So you can store the value, you can see the edit history, and you can replay it in the future or distribute to other people, and it creates a history of how, what, you, what are everything that you have done. And so every time we change our view, a lot of things are go happening on in the background um, that, are, uh, being, that are computing. Um, but everything seems to be very, very responsive, which I was quite surprised about, because it is rendering not just the p-color object, but computing the markers that are in that view region and then plotting that. And uh, it's happening every time that I'm moving my cursor or moving my view. Uh, finally, the other one is um, this one here. This one is also quite nice because uh, now here, we, this is the one about computing the uh, uh, river direction vectors. Uh, so we can move around, we can compute the values, we can compute uh, vectors. So if I want to change the direction here, I can change the direction by rotating the vectors. Oh, sorry, I can't remember which key is there. Okay, so apparently there's a help window, great because I forgot which key uh, I used to rotate it. So if you press a question mark key, it um, starts up a help window. Anyways, I think I have one minute remaining. But the idea is that um, you can compute, you can do a lot of things. And, and they are all kind of similar, actually. Um, and, um, and once you're done, I mean, actually, for example, here, uh, we can save this thing. OK, I don't want to overwrite this file, because, but I can enter some new file name, and will, everything will be saved. And once I do any more changes, um, anything else, I can just save it and save it again. So there's a lot of uh, backtracking, uh, ch tracking of changes that is happening, but uh, it's all happening in just a few hundred lines of code. So you didn't have to implement um, a very complex system. It was possible because of PyQt and Matplotlib, and definitely Python. So I think I will end there. Thank you very much.